We started in, say, 2018. We've done this for quite a, quite a bit of time now. And I think at this point, we have over 600 instances where we have something verified out in the environment that we recorded either video or seen through, you know, cell phones or something like that. And at the same time, recorded something with the equipment that allowed us to correlate those two together. And then on top of that, looking back at the people, having them report that within some period of time afterwards, they would have some type of change to the body that indicated that something energetic went by them. That was Dr. Jim Sagala on his recent interview with Ross Coulthard on News Nation. Jim Sagala is a physicist and engineer with advanced degrees in both fields. He spent many years researching anomalous phenomena, particularly in the Uintah Basin in Utah, known for sites like Skinwalker Ranch. Sagala's work focuses on scientifically investigating using advanced equipment that he basically designed and puts out in the world called Mupass, as always linked to the full videos in the description, but we'll be looking into specifically the MooPass system and how does the Experiencer program work? Thanks for being here. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. He's been involved in anomalous phenomenon research for quite a number of decades, and he's got connections with many of the top scientists in this field. What I'm fascinated to talk about with Jim today is. You hear it all the time. You hear it from so many people in mainstream science that the subject of UAPs should not be taken seriously because there is no science. There's nobody doing creditable scientific work to investigate these alleged phenomena. But in fact, Dr. Sagala has just recently published some initial results of a research project he conducted in the Uinta Basin using custom-built devices called MUPAS for Modular Unidentified Phenomenon Alert System. What they are, they're sensors that monitor a variety of environmental signals, including RF, gravimetric, gamma radiation, microwaves. And what Jim has found is, I think, bloody astounding. It's extraordinary work. It's really impressive. He these sensors adjacent to the homes and other locations where subjects who were reporting anomalous phenomena kept journals in which they tracked their anomalous experiences. These included things like unusual physical symptoms and health effects, precognitive effects, UAP and orb sightings. And these people also reported encounters with various morphologies of NHI. Yep. Aliens. And I agree with Ross. It's so frustrating, right? Mainstream science won't touch the phenomenon because there's no scientific proof. But there's no scientific pr proof because mainstream science won't touch the phenomenon. So here is one scientist, Jim Segala. This is actually the MUPAS portal, right? Modular Unidentified Phenomenon Alert system. So this is a MooPass portal. I have a username and login. That's all you need really to get in. And then this is what you would see, right? So you can actually go back in time. So we could go back. This is the East Coast MooPass device number 51128. So Carl Crusher actually has one of these MooPass systems set up at his house. So we can look November 1st, 2023 and look at actually Carl's house, what well, came up. And so this is what you see that it is tracking. So here we have uh, the gyros. So gyro X, gyro Y, gyro Z. These are your magnetometers. Mag Y, mag Z, mag X, accelerometer. And then you have accelerometers here. If you do want to get involved, there's an email, info at experiencer-studies.com. And this is an attached website, Experiencer Studies. So experiencer-studies.com provide an environment for experiencers to learn and explore. So as Jim will explain here in a second, he wanted to provide a option for people who do experience the phenomenon to actually test around their house or around themselves even. And on this website, again, link in the description, 
you can actually see uh, the study that Ross Coltart is referring to. And this actually is the study, MUPAS Anomalous Phenomenon Study Phase 1 Results, so Uinta Basin Unexplained Phenomenon. Unexplained phenomena has been reported in the Uinta Basin for over 100 years. Many events were documented in the famous book, The Utah UFO Display by Junior Hicks and Frank Salisbury. Evidence shows a high concentration of events in the region enclosed in red, which just borders Skinwalker Ranch. Many reported medical cases due to bizarre, unexplained injuries have been documented. They talk about this in the interview with Havana Syndrome. Many photographs have been taken of UAPs. So it's really to help the experiencers. Unsolved injuries for over 30 years, many unsolved medical cases of patients with strange injuries has been documented. All these experiencers with stories of torment, really, now they have something to fight back with is the idea. Eight documented life-threatening injuries occurred over the past five years. Others are known to exist. So in 2019, the Uinta Basin Anomalous Phenomena Study is initiated. So that's when they started this study five years ago. And the point is to record the signals known to arise when unidentified phenomenon occurs and correlate those to human observations in order to gain an understanding of the source. So it's to put out a bunch of these sensors as well as human sensors, Jim talks about, and try and correlate the data, try and just start collecting data and see if there's any signals that they can break out. Okay, and these are the results over the past three years. Our study has grown to include an extensive collection of enthusiastic participants from the Uintah Basin, as well as other areas of the USA where strange phenomenon is known to occur. I'm also involved with this because they're trying to extend this program to the Hestalen Valley. I'm actually going up to Hestalen beginning of September. Hopefully Jim Segal will be there, maybe Carl as well, to try and expand this program into the Hestalen Valley. If you want to try and support that or get involved, there are ways. The idea is to make it crowdfunded. So look out for news about that in the future. They collected over 3.5 terabytes of data recorded by scientific instruments in the Uintah Basin alone. Over 600 documented interactions with the phenomenon has been documented by our participants that correlates to environmental readings taken using calibrated scientific instrumentation. So that's what Jim's arguing, over 600 interactions with the phenomenon, which correlates to calibrated scientific environmental readings. They have four high capacity servers are now online collecting the data for the study. And Jim says here, statistical accuracy predicting the occurrence of an interaction has grown to over 4.8 sigma. So Jim is saying, that they can actually predict the occurrence of a phenomenon interaction up to 4.8 sigma. And five sigma is essentially the gold standard that something is real or statistically true. We continue to add new participants to the study at an increasing rate. Like I mentioned, if you want to get involved in this, contact Jim. And also, if you want to support it, look out for program to actually buy systems and install in Hestalon. All right, let's get to the interview. So that's where I really cut my teeth and learning how to be a scientist, what to do, what's the right procedures, things like that. So what have you been doing? You've been actually working at the Skinwalker Ranch, haven't you? You were involved in the ORSAP and ASS studies, the uh, essentially the um, DIA-funded studies, the studies funded by the Defense Department. Yeah, I was involved with how... His institution was actually part of that whole that whole era, uh, that whole time frame when they were uh, low was trying to understand, you know, what's going on on the ranch and doing all this uh, interesting physics and science on the ranch and how was of course a big a big part of that. He was a little science advisor, so he was actually uh, part of that whole thing and, and led a lot of the science for that. So I got involved when I was working with him. Later on, I actually was boots on the ground on Skinwalker Ranch doing investigations, looking at some of the injuries that are happening there and around in the, in the general vicinity, uh, unexplained injuries that were uh, linked to seeing things or feeling things or having some experience with some kind of uh, non-human intelligence left injuries on people. That's how I got started in this field. So let's quickly deal with the broad proposition, Jim, which I pl posited at the very beginning of the show. What do you say to the scientists, the people in mainstream science, who scoff at the notion that there is any scientific basis at all to anomalous phenomena? Well, it's it's all the, it's all the same thing. You 
in the scientific method, if you follow the scientific method and you do it properly, a lot of the the problems that you you uh, would normally encounter in an investigation go away because now you're doing you're doing statistics right. You're setting up your experiments so you can actually pull out statistics in a, in a proper way. So when you you come to a situation like this, you know you say, well, we have anomalies that are happening. There are we're having medical anomalies happening in some part of the country. So we're going to say, okay, how do we prove that? So first of all, you have to have a hypothesis that says, why are they happening? And then you design experiments. So, that's, so a lot of the things that we, we do is we put together experiments that allow us to really dive down and, and show to people that if you take all the data and you use verified experiment, verifiable type of equipment, you have proper scientific data. This is a great point from Jim. You know, science is about creating a hypothesis and then testing the hypothesis. That's basically the scientific method, how it works. The problem is if your hypothesis is too narrow, then you're going to rule out many solutions for your solution set. If you look back in history, when did the big scientific breakthroughs come through? It's when there was an anomaly, right? Rarely is it going to actually test the hypothesis they're looking at. It's really when there is a crazy anomaly going on. And that's where we learn when something doesn't match our current models. That's when we can figure out what is actually going on. So that is the scientific method. The problem is if your hypothesis generation is too narrow, right, you are ruling out so many possibilities that you will never get to the answer. This is what I'm arguing is the case with the phenomenon, what I'm arguing the case with dark matter, dark energy, all of these anomalies that we don't understand, we're just beating our heads against the same actual hypothesis. And it's all based on assumptions, right? Scientists have to start with assumptions to, to make a hypothesis. You have all your assumptions built into it. If your assumption going out the door is that NHI, alien life, could not possibly already be here on Earth, then your hypothesis is going to reflect that. And it will not be aimed at any sort of solution that actually could even find aliens or NHI on Earth. Experiment, verifiable type of equipment, you have proper scientific data. We interviewed Brendan Fugel on this show a few weeks ago, and Brendan was quite annoyed at the idea that many people push, which is that Skinwalker Ranch, like a lot of TV reality shows, just makes stuff up. Um, as I understand it, he's quite rigorous in ensuring and demanding that the producers of the TV show don't fake anything and that the phenomena, including what's being revealed in this latest season's series, which is quite extraordinary, including, you know, that any of the phenomena has to be based on solid science. As a scientist yourself, can you confirm that that's the case? Well, when I... I, of course, I did. I spent some time on the ranch, and I did a lot of work at the ranch with other scientists uh, from Hal's group. And, yeah, I would ensure that a lot of what happens is verifiable to the point where you can do it. The problem comes in: how do you get it to happen on camera? It's very, very difficult to do. So, a lot of what you're seeing might not be real time, but it is authentic in that it happened at some point and it was recreated somehow. So, and that was a problem. I spent a year there trying to do science on camera. And, you know, trying to get it, uh, you know, the things, the anomalies to happen on camera is very, very difficult to do. So you haven't just focused on Skinwalker. Your work's taken you all over the Uinta Basin, including to a place called the Blind Frog Ranch. What I'm fascinated by is that you've started using sensor systems to try to scientifically measure if when somebody is reporting experiences with anomalous phenomena, is there a detectable, statistically measurable piece of data that allows you to verify that something anomalous occurred? T tell me about MUPAS. What is it? How does it work? What are you measuring? So it evolved that whole system and the whole program that was invented to, uh, to understand this all evolved from, we found out and we were very, uh, we were very sure that we were having correlations between when people were seeing things or experiencing phenomena and then when there was actually phenomena recorded by either a camera or something like that. Okay, so this is my point. Basically, they made a hypothesis on the assumption 
right? Just the guess essentially is that these events, experiencer events, correlate or could correlate with environmental changes. So based on that, now they have an actual scientific hypothesis that experiencer events are related to changes in gamma, changes in the magnetic field could be related to changes in microwave or even sound. So basically anything they can detect for a reasonable cost is what they put out there. And this is based on an assumption, right? That it's possible so you, to actually go and test that. And then later on within, you know, say 12 to 24 hours, they were actually having symptoms that were just not normal for that type of geography that they were happened to be in. So we saw a lot of this and it was, uh, we had over 40 cases where we had verifiable medical evidence that something happened to them. And at the same time, we had some kind of evidence that they had seen something or felt something or some type of experience. And then you put all that together and you say to yourself, well, if something is actually happening physically to them during these experiences, it must have some vector or it must have gotten come from the outside into their body somehow. And if that happens, we could probably measure it at some point if we have the right equipment. So that was the inspiration to say, okay, let's put some equipment near the people that are having these experiences, seeing the UAPs or whatever that's happening, and then see if we can actually get them to, uh, to correlate the two. So what do your MUPAS sensors measure? So they measure a couple of things. A lot of it is the environmental signals, for instance, like all the radiation of, you know, radiation, of course, is, is a very, very wide band. It goes from microwave all the way up to alpha and gamma, and, and uh, so it's slow. So we measure a pretty big spread of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum, and we record it like every, every millisecond. We'll take a snapshot and bring it in and, and look at it. And then we do, you know, the gamma particles, any alpha or betas or any kind of gamma particles that might be near the person at that time. Uh, we measure all sorts of crazy things like, you know, we're measuring uh, like the, so the, the the gravity vectors, the, the magnetic fields that are there are surrounded in, anything that could be perturbated by some type of anomalous craft or some kind of energy that's in the, in the property. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. We started out as, you know, maybe just doing, you know, the, uh, the standard stuff like the radiation and the gamma. And then we said, wait a minute, those are getting affected. Why isn't the other channels being affected? Like, for instance, the acceleration vectors and things. So we started adding more and more, more and more sensors, and now we're. So, can, can, you, can you stop me there? For instance, what? Sorry, the acceleration. What was that? So the the little acceleration. So let's just say that there's something that happens in the environment where a craft will fly by. It'll it'll move the surroundings a little bit, and you can actually pick these up very very accurate or very sensitive acceleration vectors. You'll get these little bounces. Um, especially in the magnetic fields. I mean, you look at the magnetic fields, if something comes by you, some energetic thing comes by you, it's very possible that the magnetic vector is going to get a little bit, your gravity vector is going to get hit a little bit. So all of these things could get um, put into a system, and then we can look at the correlation between all these things. Jim, I've got to ask you now, I mean, when you're talking about a craft whizzing by, have you been anywhere where a craft or some kind of UAP has whizzed by and you've seen a change in a magnetic field or any other of these correlative sensor data sets? So now, after we've done this for, we started in, say, 2018, we've done this for quite a, quite a bit of time now. And I think at this point, we have over 600 instances where we have something verified out in the environment that we've recorded either video or seen through, you know, cell phones or something like that. And at the same time, recorded something with the equipment that allowed us to correlate those two together. And then on top of that, looking back at the people, having them report that within some period of time afterwards, they would have some type of change to the body that indicated that something energetic went by them. Okay, I think that is just an amazing statement from Dr. Jim Segala, basically saying they have over 600 correlated cases, right, where more than one thing changed in the environment. And then they actually had people responding back saying, I had a crazy event or something, and that correlated as well. This is from the experiencer study, phase one results, so case study 316. So Jim actually talks about this 
in the interview, when it's going on, the experiencer doesn't know the data, right? Didn't actually see this data, but writes in, quote, I'm telling you last night was such a crazy night. If I were to ever say I was abducted, it would have been last night. It was the strangest experience. So this is that night, right? You can see tracked on gamma radiation right at this time, right? Right at 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., the witching hour, essentially, I guess started at midnight, right here at midnight until uh, about 2 a.m. And you also have correlated spikes in microwave. So this is one of those events, Jim's mentioning that they had correlated spikes in gamma and microwave radiation combined with someone saying, hey, I had a crazy experience last night. Now, again, you know, does he say this every night? I'm guessing not. But this is one of those correlated events related to this MoopPass sensor. They see here the magnitude and character of the microwave readings for this event far exceed the typical household microwave signals. He also had the gamma was 22 times larger rate during the interval. The reported observation, so interrupted sleep starting after midnight, like at that, felt disoriented, confused, and commented the next day, if I were to say I was abducted, it would have been last night. So follow-up data presented to the participant a week later. A report was generated and provided to the participant. So if this stuff is happening to you, then you could sign up and actually have some data out there showing that you're not crazy. Okay, in the study, they also say during interactions with the phenomenon, observations of UAP have been reported. Many sightings of UAPs have been made when participants experience interactions with the phenomenon. When dogs are nearby, UAP sightings typically make dogs react by barking. So Jim has this in the study, allegedly correlated to those MUPAS readings. There's more pictures, unidentified aerial phenomenon correlations. So correlated with the sensors, can you pick up a sensor peak? And these are actually the sensors they have for purchase. Mupass Biometric, this is a watch you can wear with an app. Mupass Micro, this one's sold out, but this is the system. I've actually seen the system in person. You can put it down, designed to go into the ground, but can also obviously be above ground. Mupass Mini, I haven't seen this system. It's a microwave spectrum sensor module, and this is a module for a gamma ray to detect gamma rays. And this is the MUPAS online portal system. So $20 each month supports the system. So for those people saying there's no science on the phenomenon, or at least for experiencers, that's not true. Okay, so this is a study you can go and reference. And if you want to get involved, you want to wear around one of these MUPAS biometric mobile options. It records a wide range of signals from the environment and monitors your biological marker simultaneously also reports this to that MUPAS online portal. So interesting stuff going on. If you want to get involved, links in the description. And if you're interested in seeing these devices deployed in places like Hestalen, then let me know in the comments and hopefully we can set that program up. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. It really helps and it's free. Consider subscribing to get future notifications of when I release videos. And you might like this video. If you want to support the channel, join these great people over here, get exclusive bonus content, then click this button here, patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato, or become a YouTube member. If you want to continue the discussion, go to UAP Society Discord. Links are all in the description. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.